smoke has always played an important role in the history of human warfare. In China, there is a historical reference to the use of smoke signals in war. With the development of warfare, humans invented more convenient smoke bombs and expanded the functions of smoke. Today, let's talk about the story of armored vehicles and smoke bombs. The use of smoke bombs on the battlefield became more mature during the rise of armored vehicles and tanks in World War I. At that time, the main function of smoke was to obscure the enemy's vision. For example, during an attack, smoke bombs were used to cover the battlefield, reducing the casualties of the attacking forces. Tanks that emerged during this period also used smoke bombs. However, during World War II, tanks or armored vehicles mainly released smoke bombs when retreating from a disadvantageous position. They generally did not use onboard smoke bomb equipment during active attacks. After World War II, the use of smoke bombs in vehicles developed in two main directions. One was the use of ordinary smoke bombs that produce smoke through thermal reactions, and the other was the use of explosive smoke bombs, typically white phosphorus smoke bombs, some of which produce a donut-shaped smoke when they explode. In fact, many tanks or armored vehicles were equipped with smoke generators, which work by spraying fuel and other substances into a heated exhaust system or other heating systems, thus producing a large amount of smoke. Tanks or armored vehicles that are seen trailing white smoke from the rear belong to this category. However, because they are smoke generators and not smoke bombs, we will not discuss them further in this article. Ordinary thermal reaction smoke bombs are widely used, not only in military applications, but also in civilian fields. They do not have explosive capabilities, so many countries do not classify them as weapons, and they are often used in civilian applications. These smoke bombs are typically filled with substances such as hexachlorothane and zinc. When the substances undergo thermal reactions inside the bomb, they emit heat and produce white smoke, which is released through holes in the bomb. They are relatively safe to use, without open flames, and can produce smoke for a period of time. However, the disadvantage is that the smoke may not be produced quickly enough, and the quantity of smoke is not large enough instantaneously. By adding different colored dye components to the smoke bombs, the resulting smoke can have color. Armored vehicles do not tend to use colored smoke bombs very often, as they are mainly used by infantry to transmit information using different colors. Tanks and armored vehicles tend to favor explosive smoke bombs, especially white phosphorus smoke bombs. It is important to note that white phosphorus smoke bombs and white phosphorus incendiary bombs are different. In terms of their function, the smoke bombs are not considered lethal weapons. Their main purpose is still to create smoke to obscure vision. The tubular launchers for smoke bombs are typically installed on the sides of the turret. After World War II, anti-tank missiles became the nemesis of tanks and armored vehicles. However, the missiles have their drawbacks, as their guidance systems usually rely on methods such as laser guidance, radio command guidance, wire-guided command guidance, and infrared guidance. All of these methods require the guidance system to see the tank in some way, such as capturing optical information or infrared information. Tanks are not entirely defenseless against missiles. Some tank sensors can detect lasers and lock onto their source, allowing the crew to know which direction the targeting device is coming from. At a critical moment, they can launch white phosphorus smoke bombs in the general direction to effectively increase their survival probability. The characteristics of white phosphorus smoke bombs are rapid smoke generation and long-lasting smoke. After being launched, the smoke bomb explodes at a certain distance, releasing small burning pieces containing white phosphorus that produce heat and a large amount of smoke. The burning white phosphorus can continue to produce smoke for several minutes. The rapid generation of smoke by the smoke bomb in those crucial seconds is essential for the battlefield survival of tanks and armored vehicles. Timely release of smoke can cause enemy shooters to miss their window for launching a missile or cause the missile to deviate. 
Modern armored vehicles can also use smoke bombs in offensive operations, especially amphibious tanks slash vehicles during beach landings or river crossings. They take advantage of the large smoke output and long duration of white phosphorus smoke bombs to provide cover for themselves. There is another type of smoke bomb that is quite unique, called the infrared smoke bomb. Unlike other types of smoke bombs, this one does not produce much visible smoke after it explodes. Its purpose is to shield its own infrared emissions and reduce the probability of being locked onto by infrared devices. The principle of the infrared smoke bomb is to produce aerosol substances or other fine particle clouds after the explosion, thereby shielding the infrared radiation. The filling materials for the aerosol-producing ammunition include aluminum-coated glass fibers, while the filling materials for the fine particle cloud-producing ammunition include copper, zinc, graphite, and other substances. However, under current technological conditions, the effectiveness of the infrared smoke bomb is limited and its duration is very short. In the future, it may be strengthened and even integrated with other smoke bombs for use.